Charles, Charles Marnar, Emily from Mahoti, that this house do now discuss the second phase of interstate boundary settlement between Meghalaya and Assam and the need of reviewing the MOU signed between the two chief ministers. Sir, after the MOU was signed between the MDA government and its counterpart, we have seen that members belonging to the ruling side were in a jubilant mood and claimed that their government is the only government that has the courage and the sincerity to solve the problem. However, sir, I am privileged from 2008 to 2000 till 2018. So I have the experience, sir, that this is not the only government that is concerned and serious in solving the border problem. In fact, I find that the government during my time was more transparent and more careful about dealing with this issue. They have been able to take everybody on board. There was an all-party meeting and they have done a diligent work where they have documented the claim uh, made before the government of Assam. I, hear, I have with me here, sir, the presentation on issues relating to interstate boundary with Assam before the all-party meeting dated 29 July 2015. And here it includes, you know, there was a mention that the difference of interstate boundary since it was there since the creation of Meghalaya as a separate state. So, and difference of inter-district boundary even during British and Assam time. Mention also was made that long outstanding issue, cause of immense hardship, economic dislocation and breakdown of law and order in the affected areas. And in this document, it was also highlighted about the meetings of chief ministers held on the 5th of June 2010. And in this meeting, it was agreed in Tehalia that Meghalaya should present documents in support of its claim. Consequently, the government of Meghalaya has prepared this document and sent to the government of Assam. And before that, the then government has issued a public notice inviting documents, consultation with district council, DCs, etc., sir. Revenue Department prepared documents justification for each sector along with maps based on the supporting documents available. Having regard to constitutional provision, relevant notification and maps as well as historical, ethnic and linguistic link linkages. Sir, Chief Minister, I mean Chief Secretary of Meghalaya handed over sector-wise document justification maps to Chief Secretary Assam to join committee meeting held in a joint committee, I mean to say, held on 9-8-2011. See, Chief Secretary of Assam informed DO dated 2nd 9-2011, examining the papers received and will take some time for completing pre preliminary secretary. Thereafter, Assam asked for topo sheet, maps and lists of villages for areas claimed by Meghalaya. And these were furnished on 17 second, uh, 2012. Sir, so, I just, uh, I would like to touch only those areas which, uh, six differences which MOU has been signed between MDA government and uh, the counterpart Assam. When it comes to Tarawari area, sir, here, according to the claim of Meghalaya, it was mentioned here that the area is 4.69 square kilometer. And mention also was made in this claim that this area was part of Rambrai's aimship. 
taken over by British and made into Nonglang Sirship, sir. All the dated 22nd, 1879 of DC transferred the Sirship to KH Cassie and Gentle District land revenue to be deposited in that district. Therefore, sir, according to this claim, historical was part, historically, it was part of Cassie State 1876 notification corroborates this, sir. Sir, coming to Gizang forest area, this has a total area of 13.53 square kilometer. And the same claim has been made by the state government of Mikhalia. This area was part of Rambrai steamship, or the dated 20th, 2nd, 1879 of DC transferred citizenship to K. Kasi and Gentle District. Ask Mosada to collect and deposit revenue in Shillong Treasury, <coughs> historically on the Kasi and Gentle Hills notification of 1876. Number of villages in the area fall within 29 Mount Hinkut District Council constituency. Map also has been supplied on this regard. Coming to the Hahim area, sir, the total area is 3.51 square kilometer. Again, historically, this area was part of Rambrai steamship on the jurisdiction of Cassie and Giant Hills District, notification number 1430, dated 14-9-1876. Chief Commissioner asked 1877 DC Cassie and Giant Hills District to collect house tax of Nonglang Eleka. Issue of interpretation on ground of notification determined boundaries of Kamdup and United Cassie and Giant Hills. Nongriang Sea Citizenship and Nonglang Citizenship under constituency number 11 of District Council and later part of 29 Mouthful Court constituency. 1961 census shows it is a part of Nongpo police station, area inhabited largely by local tribals. Achevery Lejadubi, part of 22nd Mouthful Court Assembly constituency, as per electoral rule of 1970. And map also is attached in this claim, sir. Sir, coming to Bordua, this has an area of 147.83 square kilometer. Historically, on the Cassis Ames, taken over by British after Uturat Singh revolt, census records of 1961, 1971 show many villages on the non-popular station of United Kasi and Gentiles district. Number of villages fall within constituency number 17 of Kasi and Jad Hills District Council as per 1951 delimitation, largely inhabited by local tribals. Map also has been attached in this regard. So, so coming to Bal Baklapara, it has an area of 1.57 square kilometer. Historically, part of Mount Spung's aimship, ordered by secretary in political appeal, 20 of 1938 confirmed this. 1961-1971 census report shows that this area under Nongpo police station largely inhabited by local tribals, part of constituency number 17 of Kasi and Giant Hills ADC as per delimitation of 1951. Part of constituency number 18 of Kasi and Giant Hills ADC as Bare delimitation of 1966 and part one of Jirang District Council constituency as per delimitation 1972. Map also was there. Kanapara Pilankata, it has an area of 2.25 square kilometer. Historically, part of Millions Aimship, letter 1871 of DC Kambuk to DC. Kasi and Giant Hills boundary as a quest of expediency and Mahal rights remain with scheme of million. Further confirmed by letter of Deputy Superintendent Revenue Survey dated 512-1871 to DC schemes right not affected. Census record of 1961 and 1971 show number of villages on the Nongpo police station of United Kasi and Giant Hills district. Part of constituency number 17, Kasi and Jainter, JHADC as per delimitation of 1951. Part of constituency number 18 of KHADC as per delimitation 
1966, part of one Jirang District Council constituency as per delimitation of 1972. Sir, this exercise, I can say, was done diligently. So to claim that MDA government is the only government that has done a marvelous work as far as the settlement of boundary issue, sir, I think it is not fair at all, sir. We must also give a credit to the previous government who have diligently compiled this document and please before the Assam government. I don't know, though the present government, the MDA government, we know has constituted regional committees to go into the detail of settling the boundary in these six areas. But I don't know how many of you who claim, who praise your leadership, have ever seen or even read the report of the regional committees. As far as my information goes, sir, most of the recommendations of the regional committees have not been considered. And I don't know whether this is going to be a legal document or not, sir. Because the government is guided by a rule. And there is a law, government of Meghalaya, law, a department, cabinet affairs department, rules of executive business of the government of the state of Meghalaya. And if we go according to the rule, sir, so in para 11 and 12, here it is mentioned that orders or instruments made or executed by on be or on behalf of the government of the state of Meghalaya shall be expressed to be made or executed in the name of the governor. Orders or instruments of this government of the state shall be expressed to be made in the name of the governor and shall be signed either by the chief secretary, a principal secretary, commissioner and secretary, a secretary and an additional secretary, a joint secretary, a deputy secretary, an under secretary or such other officer as may be authorized by the government and such signature shall be deemed to be the proper authorization of such order or instrument. I think this instrument that is written here may also be called a kind of memorandum of understanding that the two governments have entered upon. In this memorandum of understanding, we see that it is the Chief Minister of Assam and the Chief Minister of Mikhalia who are the signatory on this MOU. So I don't so I need to the wisdom of the government whether this MOU will stand in the court of law. So, and we used to hear a phrase, and that is exactly from our honorable deputy chief minister, that the government, the state government will adopt a give and take policy. So here I've already read out, sir, the area claim by the state government. And what happened in these six areas of differences? I don't see that there is, you know, apply a give and take policy, a phrase which was probably properly used by members of the treasury bench. Sir, in Gizang area, the total area is 13.53 square kilometer and it goes 10.63 square kilometer to Assam and Meghalaya is being able to retain with the rest of that area, sir. Sir, Buklapara, out of 1.57 square kilometer, again 1.01 square kilometer gone to Assam. Shera, out of 11.20 square kilometer, the Assam managed to get 4.78 square kilometer. So if we plus all the areas being given to Assam under this MOU, it comes to 18.19 square kilometers something, sir. And 
we are left with 18.6 square kilometer. So in this situation, where do we stand to gain? As the Honorable Chief Minister has claimed, that this deal, that the state government, the, the Meghalaya as a state, has gained from this MOU, sir. So, sir, I feel that it was not done in a proper way, in a transparent manner. The government did not bother to take everyone on board. They left the traditional heads. They don't involve the district council. And they don't even care about the people living in the border areas. I would not mind if the people living in the border areas accept this decision taken by the government. But we know there are protests. So therefore, sir, I feel that it is a fit case for the government of the day to review and relook into this MOU and I would also like to request to be more conscious when you start to negotiate about the second phase of settlement in the border areas. Sir, I don't think we will be able to allow the government or anyone to take us for a ride. As public representative, we know that Meghalaya is a very small state. How can we allow the leadership of the state to hand over more than 18 square kilometer to Assam? Which is why, sir, yesterday when I raised, when I participate in the debate on the governor's address, I had made a mention that anything which is done in haste will always end up in waste. So I think we are in the losing sight as a state of Meghalaya. On what ground can we place MOU has gained us? This MOU has uh, managed to gain the state of Meghalaya. So therefore, sir, I strongly support the mover of this special motion and I earnestly request the Chief Minister, the government, we will work together but please take us also into confidence. It doesn't mean that because some government in the past have failed to address this problem that you will have the right to decide without the people's support, without the consideration of the people especially living in the border areas. So, with these few words, sir, I resume my seat.